In this video, you'll learn about the elasticity of labor supply and the factors that affect elasticity. Using this information, we'll then examine how to draw an elastic and inelastic labor supply curve. The elasticity of the supply of labor measures the responsiveness of the quantity supplied of labor to a change in the wage rate. If the percentage change in quantity supplied is greater than the percentage change in the wage rate, then the supply of labor is said to be wage elastic. If the percentage change in quantity supplied is less than the percentage change in the wage rate, then the supply of labor is said to be wage inelastic. There are four key factors that affect the elasticity of the supply of labor. These include skills, education and training, availability of labor, and time. The more skills a job requires, the more inelastic the supply of labor will be. Highly skilled labor is in lower supply than low skilled labor, and workers need time to develop skills through education and training. Think specifically about professional athletes. The skill required for their occupation is so high and requires so much training that simply increasing the wage rate would not suddenly make a new pool of labor available. Connected to the previous point is education and training. Many highly skilled positions require a high degree of education or training. Doctors must complete a long period of education and training before they are, they are fully licensed to practice. If their wages suddenly double, it is unlikely that a proportionate change in the quantity supplied of doctors will result. It's also important to factor in the availability of labor. If there are a high number of people out of work and a firm requires new workers, it may be able to find them more easily by increasing the wage rate. If unemployment is very low, then an increase in the wage rate may not have the same effect. During the Great Depression, people of all skill levels found themselves out of work, and in such situations, it may be easier to recruit workers at higher levels of skills by increasing the wage rate, which may not be so feasible in a strongly performing economy. The final factor is time. The longer labor has to respond to changes in the wage rate, the more elastic labor supply will be. Consider the following. If wage rates suddenly rise for cardiologists, there will not be a significant increase in the labor supply in the short run. In the long run, where labor has had more time to respond to changes in wage rates, labor supply is likely to be more responsive and thus more elastic. Now that we've understood the factors that would cause supply to be more elastic or inelastic, let's look at the diagrams for both situations. For the labor market with elastic supply, there is likely to be a more than proportionate change in the quantity supplied of labor with respect to the proportionate change in the wage rate. This kind of labor supply curve could apply to jobs with low skills or jobs that do not require much training or education. Such jobs include factory work, window cleaners and waiters and waitresses in restaurants or in the fast food industry. Jobs that require a high degree of skill, education or training will likely have a supply curve of labor that looks like something like this. An increase in the wage rate results in a less than proportionate increase in the quantity supplied of labor. Even though wages have risen, there will be a limit in the short run supply of labor in such fields. These fields include professional football players, doctors, and architects. Here's your chance to practice. Read the following questions and answer them accordingly. Pause the video here and try to answer them as best as you can before moving on. Number one, by increasing the degree of education required, this action will result in the supply of teachers becoming more inelastic. The higher requirements will result in fewer individuals becoming teachers and thus less being available to offer their work in response to increases in the wage rate. Number two, the, elas the elasticity of supply of labor is equal to positive 25% divided by positive 10%, which is a value of positive 2.5. Since the value is greater than one, the supply of labor can be said to be elastic in this case. Number three, due to the high level of training required, it's unlikely doubling the wage rate will result in a more than proportionate increase in quantity supplied in the short run. However, this question focuses on the long run. Given that labor has a longer time period to respond to the change in the wage rate, the action is likely to be successful at making the quantity supplied of labor more elastic in the long run. Hopefully you've successfully answered the final three questions and have a much better understanding of labor supply elasticity. If you have any questions, share them below and let's try to answer them together.
That's us done for now, and I will see you in the next one.